Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to you all. I'm saying good afternoon. That applies if you're watching live. Do say hello in the chat or the comments. And if it's morning or evening or afternoon on a different day, then welcome to those who are watching on replay. One day last week, we were talking about how it was pretend you're a time traveller day. And uh, another wee date related idea for today, Monday, the 12th of December. So today is the 12th of the 12th, 22. One, two, one, two, two, two. Got a wee ring to it. Yesterday was even better. One, 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 two, two, two. Yeah, the 11th of the 12th, 22, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. Um, these kind of things fascinate me. Now, today, today is doomsday, doomsday, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Maybe some of you have heard of the doomsday rule, which is uh, a rule that concerns dates and which days of the week they fall on. Now, some of you are about to switch off and some of you will be absolutely fascinated to learn that the 12th day of the 12th month and the 10th day of the 10th month and the 8th day of the 8th month and the 6th day of the 6th month and the 4th day of the 4th month will always fall on the same day of the week. And this year, 2022, all those even numbered months with their corresponding day are all Mondays. Isn't that fascinating? And armed with that doomsday rule, it can be helpful in working out when any date will fall, which day of the week. So, for example, if anyone was ever to say to you, what day of the week will the 13th of December be? 13th of December is always going to be one day after the doomsday, which this year is Monday. Next year, it will be Tuesday. There's a wee hiccup when we get to uh, leap years. But if you know which day of the week is doomsday, you can work things out. So if someone was to say to me, I've got an important date to remember next year, 7th of June. That's one that I should be remembering. <laughs> 7th of June. So what day of the week is it going to fall on? Well, it's one day after the 6th. We know that 6th is doomsday. Next year, doomsday is a Tuesday. So the day after a doomsday must be a Wednesday. If you found that interesting, have a wee Google around the doomsday rule. And if you haven't, then let's move on and remember that it's not a day for doom and gloom. We're into the week of joy. And on Sunday yesterday, we lit the third of the Advent candles, the candle for joy, the pink one. And this week, my guests will be speaking about joy and the things that bring goodness to life. My guest today is Fiona Setch, Fee Setch, and I've mentioned already the How To Be Brilliant group on Facebook, hosted, led by Michael Heppel. MichaelHeppel.com will get you to some brilliant self-help, some motivational stuff, and there's the, the How To Be Brilliant group, and there's also a, a paid subscription group Team 17. There's a book, 17, and I don't know what I've done with it. I don't think I lent it to anyone. Did I lend it to you? Can I have it back? <laughs> 17, the book, um, was, was written by Michael Heppel with some input from what became Team 17. And, uh, well, let's go and meet the research. Lovely to connect with you. We, we first connected via our mutual friend, Michael Heppel, who I, I've mentioned already in the series. And uh, well, I, I actually first connected with, with Michael 
getting on for 20 years ago, um, around the time when his first book, How to Be Brilliant, came out. I had picked it up. I think it was in Chicago airport. And I remember um, uh, just being riveted in, in what I was reading. I think I, I read the whole thing on a, a long distance flight. I, how long have you been? been aware of Michael's stuff. You've known him a wee while as well, yes, haven't you? Yes, I've, I've, I've known Michael for about 20 years and I'm friends with he and Christine and was uh, part of the How To Be Brilliant group right from the start um, and uh, was, was contributing to the group. And then, of course, lockdown happened. Uh, and um, I work, um, I have my own coaching and training business. Uh, and all my work evaporated during the first lockdown because, you know, that was the nature of the uh, the work, uh, the situation. And um, I was uh, really the connection with How to Be Brilliant and then Team 17 and write that book was one of the things that kept me going during lockdown. Mm, so, yeah, yeah. MichaelHeppel.com is where folk can find out more. There's um, the, 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 the homepage of the website, The Cure to an Average Life. I like that. Um, <laughs> we're thinking about, about joy this week. On Sunday there, we lit the, the third of the Advent candles, a candle for joy. Do you think joy is important in life, Fee? I certainly do. You could say it could be my middle name if it wasn't enthusiastic. Um, <laughs> and I, I, um, I would say that I sprinkle joy into life. And I do this through my coaching. I had a first career as a nurse. And my, um, my work changed when I became a palliative care nurse and I was working at an AIDS hospice in London called London Lighthouse. Mm. Uh, and it was at the time when people were uh, diagnosed and dying quite quickly. And it was very challenging working there and very enjoyable. Uh, and it made me realize that life is very short and we need to enjoy what we're doing. So I, um, I retrained in teaching adults and coaching and supervision and uh, moved back to the Northeast because I've been living in London for eight years with my husband and um, started working at Marie Curie Cancer Care at one of their hospices. They have about 12 hospices throughout the UK. And I was working there doing staff development with the, uh, the porters, the cleaners, the doctors, the nurses, the fundraisers loving what I was doing and they had an organizational restructure and they made my role redundant and at the same time as this was happening I got headhunted by some people several companies and what was the deanery of medicine to do some work with them I would never planned to work to uh to, to run my own business um but here I am I've been doing it for 20 years now and I'm passionate about helping people enjoy what mm. they do I love what I do um, I work in a hospice one day a week doing development with their staff, the clinical staff, and then I work with people helping them think about their careers as they grow older, thinking about retirement, what can they do to enjoy the, that transition, um, and people leaving university and making sure that they're starting out in the sort of roles that they might like to do, or if they've started something and they're not very happy in what they're doing, then I'll help them do some career development and find something that they would like to do. Mm. Help people with their confidence. Um, and that's joyous. It's joyous when somebody's not in a good place in their life and through coaching, you can help them to be more confident and you literally watch people transform. So I have here um, a peony rose and I use it as a metaphor. So when a peony rose is in its bud shape, you never know quite how it's going to unfurl. And that's a bit like coaching. You never know. So somebody might want to work on this bit, which means this bit will open up. And it's just just wonderful to be able to help people do that. Mm. 
what what might be some some quick tips to to share with with folk who are maybe who are maybe not feeling joyful and goodness with all that's going on just now around uh, fuel poverty cost of living crisis thinking of the bigger picture around around the world Ukraine and elsewhere where there's war hatred misunderstanding how how can we turn that around and and know some some joy deep within any any hints and tips for those who are who are watching and listening so the first thing would be to think about what am i able to do something about what's in my circle of concern and influence so for example for me what i don't do a lot of is i don't watch the news late at night because i know that i'll worry and perhaps not sleep as well so I, I will restrict the times when I listen to or watch the news. Um, and I'll, when, if, I'm wor if I'm really worried about something, I'll think, what can I do something about? What can I help with or what can I do something? And I'll try and do that and I'll try and let go of or talk to somebody about it rather than just hanging on to it or, or getting watching news um something called doom scrolling that people do on social media if they put something in about uh, something they're worried about they, then they will get sent more and more information on it which they don't want to see but that's the way these algorithms mm -hmm. work so switch off your social media make sure that you have time where you're not being bombarded with information same with uh, tv we can stream television and news you know 24 hours a day now and it, it just does heighten anxiety um and it suck, can suck the joy out of you um mm. so that would be yeah. one of my tips thank thank you for that fee obviously in in your work when you are engaging with other people and, and giving so much of yourself it's important that that you are taking the time so what what sort of things would you do to keep that joy topped up in your own life well connection and connection with people is really important with my family my my husband my son and friends and family um and also i have a um we have three cats this is a, a brooch the wrong side this is a brooch from of sort of two of the cats um i saw this brooch and it reminded me of them i was just watching them outside earlier i was outside putting salt down on the drive because it snowed here and it's very chilly and I, <laughs> I looked in the window and all three cats were watching me and the window was open, but they were going, do you really think we're going out there? And then Millie, my three-legged border terrier, running around going, you know, can I play, can I play? So animals, I love my animals. Um, and I take my dog Millie out and she just runs after a ball <laughs> and barks like this. The, you've heard her, Donald. She's, it's, mm. like, it's, it's like a cross between a seal and a seagull um and I, I just love that um but you know i got into the habit of trying to do two things at once so i was trying to talk to people or trying to listen to a podcast while i was doing that and i wasn't she wasn't enjoying it and i wasn't enjoying it and i thought stop just be with millie on the field throwing the ball letting that so be more mindful uh, it's really easy to try and multitask and you know i fall in the trap of that as well I also have a coach. I pay for my own coaching um, each month, um, and that's really important. It motivates me. It helps me recognise what I'm doing really well and some areas I could improve on. Um, and I'm part of um, Team 17, which is just this brilliant group that that we, where we met through that, didn't we, Donald? Mm, um, and yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm quite active in that group. We meet online, um, and um, and we're, we're starting to meet. In, I mean, it's been going for two years now, um, and we've recently started meeting in person. Um, you were at the, the Edinburgh event, yeah, yeah, and I was, at the one, I was at the one um, down south. Um, so, connecting with people, and also I swim. I I love. I think I was a mermaid in a former life. I just love to <laughs> swim, um, and um, and also I love to sing. Um, I, I, I'm going to explore in the new year joining a choir, but I'm quite well known for just bursting into song, um, and that, and, um, and and that brings me joy. Well, that a nice a nice wee um, 
introduction into my next uh, thought. Um, Christmas time. What what are you what are you enjoy? What are you looking forward to about uh, Christmas time and Christmas songs, Christmas carols? Is there a favourite? Yes, the Christmas carol that I well, it's not really a, a carol. It's more of a folky song. So it would be all around my hat. I will wear the green willow and all around my hat. I love that one. <laughs> um, and Christmas, well, what I'm really looking forward to is um, just having some downtime, spending some time with my husband and my son. Although he's 18, I probably won't see that much of him. Um, I'll, I'll enjoy cooking. I'll enjoy creating some new soups in my soup gadget. Um, and I'm going to really enjoy sitting down and writing Christmas cards and if I've got time writing some letters in those because I really love to connect with people um, and spending time with people. So, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, spending time with people and connecting with people. Fantastic. Yeah. And in fact, today, Monday, the 12th of December, I think I heard was the what was the last date for second class post stamps. I hope hope all the Christmas cards um, are out in good in good time. Fee, it's been it's been lovely to have uh, this this conversation with you. I hope that Christmas time, when it comes, is filled with joy and peace and love and hope and all God's good gifts. Thank you for your time and being part of the adventure 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Fee. Great to connect with you there. So that's about it for today, the 12th of December. And oh, you can find out some more about Fiona and her work at fionasetch.co.uk and you see that on screen there just now and there'll be a link in uh, where is it that way is it yes that way um, <laughs> the description wherever you're seeing the YouTube description to the side maybe down below um, you'll see a, a link to someone else singing that uh, folky song uh, that, that he was mentioning. Until tomorrow, Tuesday, Tuesday, the 13th of December. Take care. God bless you all. Thank you for watching on YouTube, Facebook or LinkedIn or listening to the audio only podcast version. Full details at www.aksm.org.uk forward slash adventure. Every day until Christmas Eve, four o'clock and available thereafter. May hope and peace, joy, love and all God's good gifts be yours this Advent season and always.